All right, I don't normally do requests, but um, there was uh, someone out there on Facebook who wanted me to prove Wilson's theorem, and I was very intrigued by it because I'd never heard of it, uh, let alone proved it. So um, for Joan at uh, Cebu Technological University in the Philippines, this is for you. So the proof of Wilson's theorem starts with a discussion about an important property about modular arithmetic. And what that property is, is um, for every modulus m that I use, there has to be a non-zero number, there has to be a multiplicative inverse of every number in that modulus. What that means is for every number in that modulus, there has to exist another number, um, and let's call those numbers u and v, there has to exist a v for every u so that when you multiply those two together you get one because that's what a multiplicative inverse is. Uh, there are times when a number can be its own inverse so that when you multiply that number by itself you get one instead of multiplying by a different number to get one. So let's talk about this a little bit further. Um, we're going to make our modulus prime because that's what uh, Wilson's theorem calls for. So if our modulus is prime um, we're going to look at which numbers are their own inverses. Okay, so we're just going to make up a number u and we're going to figure out what u could equal. So if u is its own inverse, then if I square it or multiply it by itself, I'm going to get 1 modulo p. That means if I subtract 1 from each side, I get that u squared minus 1 equals 0. And if something equals 0 mod p, that means that p divides it, p is a factor of it. So if p is a factor of u squared minus 1, or if p divides u squared minus 1, that means I can factor u squared minus 1, it's a difference of squares. So that means that p has to divide u plus 1 times u minus 1. And since p is prime, then p either divides u plus 1 or p divides u minus 1. There's no other factor that can do that. And if I put those back in modulo form again, that means that u is either equal to 1 modulo p or u is congruent to negative 1 modulo p. And the negative 1 I kind of need to fix. I always like my numbers uh, modulo p to be somewhere between 0 and uh, p minus 1. So since negative 1 isn't really there, I can add or subtract p as many times as I want in order to get it in the range from 0 to p minus 1. So for the negative 1 here, I'm just going to add p to it once to get it within uh, 0 to p minus 1, and it actually ends up equaling p minus 1. Okay, so those are the only two numbers, modulo p, that are their own inverses. Okay. 1 and p minus 1 are their own are their own inverses and no other number uh, has that property modulo p. So what that means is every other number that's not 1 and is not p minus 1 has some other multiplicative inverse. So there's some other number that you would have to multiply by that number to get 1. That becomes very important in Wilson's theorem because this is Wilson's theorem. It says that p is prime if and only if p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 modulo p. So if I write out what p minus 1 factorial actually is, that's what I get. It's p minus 1 times p minus 2 all the way down to 1. And so, as I said before, 1 and p minus 1 are the only ones that multiply by themselves to get 1. All of the other numbers between 2 and p minus 2 can be paired up with some other number between 2 and p minus 2 so that uh, that pair of numbers multiplies to give 1. So if I look at what I just wrote up here and I ignore the p minus 1 and I ignore the 1 and I look at all the stuff in the middle from p minus 2 to 2, I'm going to put that in square brackets. But what I was saying is each number in here can be multiplied by another number in here to get 1. So p minus 1 is still p minus 1. The 1 at the end is still 1. But then all of these other numbers in the middle 
all can be paired up and multiplied to give 1, modulo p. So if I simplify that, that's p minus 1 modulo p. And just like I added p before to get it between 0 and p minus 1, if I want to make it look more like Wilson's theorem, I just need to subtract p as many times as I want, um, still making it congruent, um, but making it look a little different. So if I subtract p just once, I'll get negative 1 modulo p, which is the right side of this theorem. So it has been proven. Um, I've been told that going the other direction because it's an if and only if is a pretty easy exercise, so I'll leave that up to you. Um, but that's Wilson's theorem, so thank you for the challenge, and I hope my explanation was good.